All right, we are live here. Hello, welcome. Julian Rabi here, career coach for remote jobs. And in this live, I will review your resume for free. Yes, that's it. I will be reviewing some of the resumes that I received along the past days. And uh, the ones who sent, who shared this, uh, those resumes with me, they want to land a remote job. So for the ones that I'm gonna be reviewing the resume live, amazing, I'm gonna give specific feedback to you. But for everyone else watching, I promise you that you're gonna learn also from other people's resumes. So even if I don't pick up your resume, I still recommend that you stay until the end because everything that I'm gonna share uh, is applicable to your case, to your situation. You can get that knowledge that I will share for free today and review your resume to help you to increase the chances of landing a remote job. So you're all very welcome here. Juliana Rabi, a real coach for remote jobs. And today I will be reviewing a lot of resumes, very valuable, practical information to share with you. Okay, so just to start, I just want to make sure that the technical part is properly down from my side. So the ones who are live from I'm not sure that my sound is good. Let me see. Uh, okay, so can people who are on LinkedIn and watching on um I think YouTube the sound is a bit weird. So can someone confirm if there is someone live on YouTube? Can someone confirm that the sound is, is good? Because I have the feeling that the sound sounds robotic. Okay, so let me just a second. I'll just get the other headphone. Let me change it. I have the same thing happen in previous live. So I have the other headphone here. So just a second. And do things live. That's what happened, right? We always need to have a second pair of headphones because you might need them. So, okay. So, how is the sound now? Is it better? I just changed yeah, those ones. Now I have those one here. Let me see. Sound was breaking up. Yes, yes. Let's see now. Can someone confirm if the sound now is better? I just changed it.
now. Yes, I think I touched the microphone here, so I, I get excited with my hands and then. Now it should be fine, right? Just see in the chat. <laughs> just, please just confirm if the, the sound is back. I think I touched the mute by mistake. Um, let me see if someone can confirm. I lost the audio. Should be back now. Let me see if the audio is back now. So far, so good. Okay, okay. So while I was on mute, mute, sorry, I was just saying that I'm going to be very hard into the comments because I really want to teach you and to add value in the process. So uh, I might be a bit hard into my comments and be very strict and go like very into the details, but I think that um, that's how you learn. So the ones who shared the resume, thank you in advance. And it's not a personal critique to you. It's only about the resume from the perspective of let's talk about it, let's learn together so we can all improve our resumes. If I'm evaluating yours live, or even if I'm not evaluating yours live, I hope I can add value to everyone here. Okay. So now it works perfect. I will try not to touch the mute anymore. And let's start with the first hmm, resume. Let me just see. second the first resume i'm gonna review is from luana santos luana santos so i don't know if luana is here luana if you are here um just say hi in the chat luana santos so everyone should be able to see the resume now can you just confirm if you see the resume luana if you are here live i'd love to see your hi in the chat okay luana santos uh this is the first resume i'm going to review and remember uh take notes of what i'm sharing because even if you're not luana santos there's only one luana santos but to everyone else watching what i'm going to share here about her resume will probably also be extremely helpful to you to improve your own resume so go ahead take pen and paper write down and learn from it okay Luana Santos, that's the first resume I'm going to evaluate here. So Luana Santos, this is the first resume. I'm going to be looking down because I took some notes here just to make sure that I don't repeat the same comments. So every time I look down, it's because I'm looking to what I, I wrote here. Okay, first comment about Luana Santos' resume is that, look, this resume looks beautiful. I like the colors. I like photo i like that she used this one column that is gray and all of that but uh, it is beautiful but it's not very practical okay when it comes to resume writing it's not about being beautiful being colorful being creative because this sometimes does not work most of the times this kind of resume like the one i'm sharing they do not pass the applicant tracking system what is that eight yes the robots, the softwares that uh, most of the times are behind any time of uh, any kind of website that you apply for a job. When you submit your resume through LinkedIn, through a company's website, through a job board, probably there is some kind of software behind what you see, right, behind the website that will screen the resumes, that will filter resumes. And some of them do not read, for example, different colors like the red that we want to use, the gray. Some of those ATS, applicant tracking system, do not read well different columns, okay? Her resume is divided into columns. Uh, so the recommendation is don't use that because it looks beautiful to the human eyes, but it might not be effective to the robots, to the software, to the platforms that will filter the resume. So Luana, instead of caring about the layout, about the appearance of the resume, you should focus more on the content. Okay, so content over layout. Every time you're going to use your resume to apply through a website, through LinkedIn or through the comments page. Luana, if you're going to send this resume to someone directly via email or on a LinkedIn chat, that's fine. It's okay, there is no problem. But if you're going to submit your resume through website, job board, or LinkedIn, it's better that you don't use different colors, different uh, co uh, col columns, colors, 
and photo on the resume. So PDF or Word format will work much better every time. Okay, this is the first comment. First comment. Second comment. Oh, okay. Second comment is about this initial part. So the initial part on the resume is where you should send, you should share the contact details, right? So she shared her phone number. It's good. So she shared three phone numbers. <laughs> Maybe one would be fine, but okay. She shared three from phone numbers. She shared her email. Uh, she shared the, if I click here, I will go to her LinkedIn profile. So this is, this is fine. Maybe you want to add the link to it, but the comment here is like, don't forget to add the link to your LinkedIn profile. This is a mistake that I see happening very often among job seekers. They don't think that the link to the LinkedIn profile is important, but it is important because when a recruiter receives your resume, the person will at some point, yes or yes, review your LinkedIn profile. If the person uh, finds you on LinkedIn at some point during the recruitment process, the recruiter will ask for your resume. So resume and LinkedIn profile, they always go together. So just make sure you add the link to your LinkedIn profile in your resume to make it easier for the recruiter to find you, to get all the information that they need from you. Okay. And... My third comment, okay, is about the number of pages on this resume. So if I scroll down here, there's the first page, then we have the second page, and we have the third page, right? So Luana's uh, resume has three pages. What I like to suggest is to stick to two pages, okay? Three pages can be considered too long to some recruiters. Recruiters are busy, they have hundreds of resumes to check and all of that. So three pages, they might feel a bit like lazy to read all of that. And this is not the feeling that you want to generate on a recruiter because you do want the person to read everything that you wrote because you're going to optimize the way you write the resume. So three pages can be considered by a lot of recruiters as very long. So I will suggest that you stick to two pages. Okay, and then you might be thinking, oh, but I always heard about this one page resume. It's better to have only one page. It's mandatory. Look, it's not mandatory to have a one page resume. And I personally find it very difficult to narrow down, to summarize all the information in only one page, especially if you have like 10, 15, 20 years of experience. It's really hard to put it all in one page. So me personally, I don't like the uh, one page resume only because I have a hard time um, creating that, right? So it's perfectly fine if you use two page resume, there is no big deal about it, but three pages like we wanted it, that's already long. Um, don't go for four page resume, five page, six page, there is no point about it. So two, Pages is the ideal size of resume. Of course, you're going to need to narrow down. Of course, you probably won't be able to put all together in the same resume. I get it, and I will help you with that. But my suggestion as an overall suggestion is a two-page resume. So you want to try to narrow down uh, and eliminate one page of the resume. Okay. Um, those are my comments about Luana's resume. So Luana, I don't know if you are live here, if you want to say hi, if you want to share, if it was helpful to you or not. Luana, if you are here, just, um, yeah, just say hi in the chat. Luana, Luana Santos, right? That was the, the first resume. And I want to know for the ones who were watching, if this was helpful to you, even if you're not the person I was reviewing the resume, please let me know in the chat if this was um, if this was helpful and if you uh, learned something from it. Because as I said, be smart, and if you're here with me, <laughs> make the most of your time and learn from everyone else's resume. So not only when I review yours, if I review yours, uh, but also every resume that I giving feedback because I've received more resumes than I'll be able to review now. So uh, we can learn from each other and we can grow together, support each other in the process. Uh, Milad is asking if he can still send uh, the resume for review. No, Milad, I'm afraid not because I already prepared for this session as I shared here. I took notes about what I'm going to share because I want to make sure I comment different things in each resume. So I'll need to study your resume uh, before going live and reviewing it. So when I have 
a lot of resumes already. So I'm picking up from the ones who sent it in the previous days until this morning. Okay. Uh, Halema said it was helpful. I'm glad to read, to read that. Thanks for the feedback. Comments are always helpful. Thanks, Matt. Very helpful suggestions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adrienne. Let's go to the second resume. Let's go for it. It might be yours. So attention here. Before that, I just want to make you an invitation. So I want to invite you all to... live here yes that's what i want to share i want to invite you to get your phone and scan this qr code okay to join my vip telegram group this is a group that i created to uh, be closer to you have an easier communication with you and share some special gifts i shared a lot of things for free already in the past day so if you're not there you're missing good stuff already i also shared uh some surprises some special gifts and uh special exclusive discounts to some of my programs okay so there are a lot of new things coming up in the next few days so if i were you i would scan this qr code and go to the vip group uh, i won't be talking about everything i'm going to share in the group here because that's exactly why I have the group. But I suggest that you scan the QR code and you join the VIP group. We're going to keep a closer conversation. I'm going to share a lot of useful things about how to land a remote job. So if you like this content, the feedback I'm giving about the resume, you're going to love what I prepared for you on the VIP group. So just scan the QR code with your phone and I will see you inside the VIP Telegram group. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the second resume that I'm going to evaluate, uh, review here live. So just a second. All right. So the second resume that I'm going to share is from Chris, Christiane Valle. Christiane Valle. I don't know if Christiane is here. If you are, please say hi in the chat, say hello. It's going to be nice to feel your energy here while I am reviewing your resume uh, live. So Christiane Valle, that's the next resume I'm going to review. And as I said, remember, there is always something that you can learn and double check in your resume and improve it. So don't worry if you're not Christiane Valle, there is only one. <laughs> but everyone else here should benefit from the comments and the feedback I'm going to give about this resume. Okay, so let me check my notes here. Let me see what I wrote about Christiane Valley. Um, okay, first comment here, Christiane. You start the resume with your name, which is the right way to start. So just put your name in bold, in a big letter to make it very clear who is sending that resume. So that's correct. Right after, on the second line of the resume, you wrote, strategic events management then you use this horizontal bar you wrote travel planner a different idea then you use the horizontal bar again and uh not horizontal vertical sorry <laughs> the vertical bar and then you share you shared the third idea project management right my comment about it christiana is you are sharing three very different uh, job titles or areas of interest okay being in a strategic event management is very different than being a travel planner which is completely different than being a project manager so when you share those three very different ideas at the top of your resume as a recruiter i feel confused about it i don't really get what you want like do you want a job as a travel planner do you want a job as a project management or are you more interested in strategic event management? So it's not clear. And what you want is to make, to be very clear, always clear in your resume. So resume should not leave space for confusion, for misinterpretation, because that goes against you. If the recruiter doesn't really get, is she interested in a project management position or she wants something else? Probably the recruiter will just skip your resume and go for something else. So you want to make, you know, be clear about the information you share on the resume. So on the second line, of your resume you should never mention three completely different job titles and areas and industries so stick to one which one juliana the one that you're applying for at that moment because i totally get look i get that as a job seeker you might be considering travel and jobs 
you might also be applying for uh, project manager jobs. That's fine. But when you write one resume is for one specific job. So you cannot mix project management, strategic event management and all of that. So don't put three very different job titles on the resume because it's very confusing and the recruiter might think if she doesn't know what she wants, I'm just going to go for someone who knows that. So this, this is very confusing. I don't really get what you want. And as a recruiter, I would think like, I'll just go for someone who knows what they want. So attention to it. Okay. Let me see. Okay. What I noticed overall, Christian, is that you use the very, very small font, like the size of the letter is very small along the whole document, right? And I guess the reason to do that is because you wanted to fit everything in one page, right? Because otherwise, with the amount of text you have here, you would not have fit in one page. And then you also use the columns here. So as I mentioned when I was reviewing the resume before, I personally don't recommend one page resume because you need to put the size of the letter they found very small. It's not comfortable to read. I was like, I can't really read that. It's hard for the eyes. Uh, makes me lazy because I have to make an extra effort to read what you wrote. And also, you also made a mistake of two columns, as I mentioned on the previous resume. Not all the applicant tracking systems, not all the ATS the robots, the platforms that filters the resumes, not all of them uh, read well columns. So instead of using such a small size of letter font, I suggest that you go for a second page resume, two pages is perfectly fine, and then you use a font that is like, I don't know, 11, I think would be the minimum. 11, 12 would be a better uh, size of, for the text. So make it easier for the recruiter to read some spaces in the between, maybe some capital letters, some bold and all of that, but not a super small font because uh, I feel lazy just when I see it, it's like, oh, I have to read all of that. So remember, recruiters are busy. They are reviewing a lot of resumes and fast. So you want to make the text easy to be read because that increases the chance that the person will, will actually read it instead of just skipping it because oh, I feel lazy to read that and then go to, to another resume. Okay. Um, okay. The other comment about Christiana's resume is about the uh, career highlights. She called it career highlights, could be also named experience, right? That part of the, the resume that you're going to talk more in details about your current job and the job that you had before. So this is a very important part. Um, everybody that I will review the resume had an experience part or career highlights. So everyone has uh, has to talk about their previous experience and their current experience on the resume. But of course, there are different ways to talk about your work experience. And I'm going to pick up this example here, the event manager, right, that Christiana worked uh, as a self-employed from 2009 until 2022, until last year, right? The thing here is that she mentioned one, two, three, four, five bullet points which could be fine, but I felt, Christiane, that uh, you were still very um, superficial on the way you described what you described. So, for example, um, this example, track records of orchestrating and managing multiply events simultaneously. When you say multiply events, I don't know if you're talking about two, if you're talking about 20, if you're talking about 30, so instead of just saying, I was managing a lot of events simultaneously, mention a number. Give me a better idea of how many events you're managing. If you want to go even further, which I suggest, you can say events up to 200 people, for example. So I can imagine how many simultaneous events you were doing, how many people in each event, and it gives me a completely different perception of what you're doing. So when you are talking about the jobs you did or the job you're doing now, the more details you share, the better. This is not about just uh, describing what you did. It's adding the information that gives me a better idea that helps to sell you better as a candidate. So let me pick up another example. Uh, okay, this one. Developed a strong negotiation and positive relationship building skills. Why do you think that the relationships were positive? Based on what? 
do you say that? Like, can you demonstrate that they were positive relationships? How do you know they were positive relationships? Well, um, I was call it, making cold calls and I was converting more than 80% of the people. Okay, so it looks like the relationships you're building were resulting into people buying your services or, you know, join your events or something like that. But if you just say positive relationships, building the skills, it's like it's very fluffy. It doesn't really tell much. So instead of just mentioning the thing, I invite you to go one step deeper and whatever is possible, mention numbers and percentage to demonstrate what you're saying that you did. Okay. Uh, like here, is stronger knowledge of budgets budgets but what kind of budget one million budget twenty thousand million budgets five hundred thousand budget uh, give more details be more specific because that adds value to um to you and it gives the recruiter a better understanding of the complexity of the things you do so for everyone else watching the more specific you can be when you talk about your work experience the better and if you can still add numbers and percentage to make it more visual to make it more clear much much better okay so those are my comments about christiane valley's um resume so christiane are you there are you live here if you are please say oh you are yes i see you here hi hi christiane makes totally sense nice nice i'm glad you're here uh sorry that i'm being very strict very hard uh the resume is very well written so it took me a while to, to find something to comment but anyways that's what i'm here for right <laughs> so uh it's about refining you know small details that will make a difference and will help you to fingers crossed land the remote job you want faster okay oh we have jay-z bat hi jay-z ashid nice to see you all here so um right so christian i hope it was helpful to you i hope you can um implement those small chains also and um we are gonna go for the third resume review but before that i want to share one thing with you you are here because you want to land a remote job right i get that i'm here to help you with that and once you land a remote job you will probably start traveling more right that's what i'm assuming um even if you work from home traveling and working from different places is something that you can do when you work remotely and once you start traveling more you should pay attention to uh things that can happen when you travel so travel insurance is something that every single remote work should pay attention i travel and work from different countries and i have travel insurance because i mean i don't want to be negative but you never know what's going to happen so there is one company that i want to mention to you for you to check called safe to wing safe to wing is a consolidated international insurance company that they have different packets different options depending on your age depending on where you are traveling to depending on your situation but they will cover you in case you have any emergency any accident i mean i hope you don't but we never know those things and i know that when you start your new remote job you will have more flexibility more freedom so you're going to be able to travel more a lot of people who come talk to me they're like oh i wish i could travel and work at the same time it's amazing but make sure that you have travel insurance because you don't want to risk your own life you're healthy you don't want to have problems on the road so get a remote job i'll help you with that then consider some travel insurance uh check the options that are available go for the one that suits you more so i will share on the link here in the comments uh the link to safe doing you can click there you can click now leave it open so stay with me here in the live but after that you can check safe Wings and see what option suits you better so i highly recommend that you protect your career landing a remote job and that you protect your life your health so you don't need to worry about it just let them take care of you in case you need some medical assistance okay so i'm leaving the link in the in the comments um in the meantime if you have any questions any comments please use the chat for that um hi obai nice to see you here matthew is saying i have a related question in my case i have multiple job titles but in the same general field, should they still break them up into individual resumes? Well, Matt, depend on the position on the, the job you're applying for. If you're applying for a 
project manager, you can talk only or mainly about the project manager positions and you can summarize in some part of your resume saying something like uh, related work experience and then you give a summary and overview of the other experience. But remember, if you're applying for one kind of job, you should talk about your experience related to that specific job, even if you have experience uh, that is related to it. But try to narrow down as much as possible to the job you're applying for. It's going to be less confusing to the recruiter. Okay? Mm. Let's go to the third resume. Who is ready for the third resume? Let me know in the chat. Ready? Write ready in the chat if you're ready for the third resume. If it wasn't off, I can I can stop here. I mean, I can keep going, but I want to check if you want me to. <laughs> to keep reviewing the resumes so please send me some feedback are you enjoying is this live helpful do you want me to keep going i have more stuff to share but i would just want to see if you are still interested if you still want to see more or if you had an off already so let me know if i should go for my third resume review of the day ready stace is ready so that's it stacy that goes for you because you're the one who answer that okay uh one more question here what if you want to pivot to a different job title like going from product development to project management well that's a different strategy uh but you want to talk about the job you want to get not necessarily the job you had and uh you should emphasize on the transferable skills the experience and the skills you had in the past that you can use in the new job the new position that you want to get okay everybody's ready amazing now oh actually candice that's your resume yes that i have you wow what a coincidence she asked about the pivoting career and i will actually review her resume now so let me uh let me see how do i do that so let me share that candice Candice Padro, sorry if I'm not pronouncing it properly, but I have your resume here in the line. You're the next one. That's amazing. So I know that you are here. Nice, nice. Let me see if I'm sharing here. Yes. All right. Candice Padro. Let's, let's do this. Nice. So let me see what I wrote here. Um, of the expertise. Okay, amazing. So I'm going to start talking about this part here. Of the resume the expertise okay some people call this um, section uh, skills also i have seen also like career highlights so the the name you call this part is not the most important thing i just want to talk about this lock of information this part here okay this area that um, sorry let me see if i can mark it properly here yes <laughs> this part so this is the part that you uh, make a list of different skills, right? Different specialties that you have, ideas that you want to highlight in your resume. What I see very often is that uh, job seekers do that normally just like Candice did, two or even three different polios, okay? If you're paying attention since the beginning, you probably notice that I will not suggest you to use columns on the resume, right? Remember, I mentioned that a few times already. Why not use columns? Like this is one column, side like half of the paper, and then this is the other column, right? The other half of the paper. I will not recommend you to use that because as I mentioned before, some of the softwares that filters resumes, the applicant tracking system, that's the technical name, or ATS, that's the short version, ATS, some of them, they don't read properly different columns on the document. You will never know which kind of uh, software that specific company is using. So my suggestion is like, you know, better safe than sorry, you know that saying, just don't use columns because then you're safer. And whatever you write in a full text, like from bottom, uh, from the top and to the bottom, the program, the software will understand that properly. So don't use two points. This is the first thing. But also, I don't really see the value of just listing a lot of things like project management, project implementation, product life cycle management, revenue and profit growth. You are almost like throwing up all those things on the paper without context without details without much information so it's very easy to write change management 
but at the same time, if you think about it, it's kind of empty because it's like, what have you done related to change management? Where, what, what was the impact? What was the result? Were you a change manager? Were you participating in a change management project? What was the impact for the company? Um, how long it lasts? How was this project? It's very empty when you just throw on the paper things like process improvement. Of course, process improvement is important. I mean, I, I totally get it. But the way you put just like process improvement without any context, without any further detail, it gets a bit fluffy. It loses a bit the power. So my suggestion is that instead of using a long list of expertise or skills, that you try to find a better way in the resume to mention those things because they are probably important but you give some context you add more information you add numbers and percentage you share an example you put it into a context when i was a manager in that specific job i was leading a team of x people and i was also managing the vendors for example i was in charge of the process improvement of every new client and so on and so on but if you just throw on the paper things it gets a bit less value okay this is the first comment for Candice checking here on my paper because as I said I took notes to share the best information with you in a shorter period of time so let me see the second one um ah okay now I'm gonna go back to this part here the profile okay profile some people call it summary some people call it career highlights or highlights, so uh, pretty much is the second block of information that you should have in your resume. So Candice did it right. So first she mentioned, this, yes. First she mentioned the contact details, her name, location, the phone number, email address, LinkedIn, uh, URL, amazing. Then the second block of information is this one. This is extremely important. So if you don't have a profile, or a summary or a career highlight or highlights in your resume you should have that Candice have it she has it amazing but the thing here Candice is that I found this profile a bit generic a bit too vague and let, let me show you why because you mentioned that you have experience and all of that and then you said both in 500 uh, fortune 500 companies and the startup environments when you say that I get what you want to say, probably. I think I get, <laughs> at least. So you want to show the diversity of variety that you have because a startup company is very different in every way than a 500 fortune company, right? They are almost opposite regarding signs, uh, stage of company, the process, the volume of um, budget, and the complexity of projects and all of that. So I understand or I'm assuming that you want to show like I'm versatile, I have done, worked for smaller companies and bigger companies and all of that, which is nice. But if you are applying for a startup company, okay, if you mention that you have experience in Fortune 500 companies, they might think like mm, she will not get used to our way of work because we operate in a very different way than a Fortune 500 company. You see my point? And the other way around also, if you're applying for a more consolidated, older company, more established in the market, and you come up saying, hey, I have experience in a startup, they might think, mm, I'm not sure she has the profile we are looking for. She doesn't have the mindset to work in a Fortune 500 company. So if you mention way too many things, very diverse experience, what you generate in the recruiter is doubt, confusion, because the person is like, does she prefer a startup or a more consolidated company? The recruiter will never know. So again, the resume should never leave a space for confusion or doubts. You want to be straightforward. So Candice, if you are applying for a startup company, you can remove this part. You don't need to mention that you have experience in other kind of companies. You will mention that in the experience when you're talking about the job. Uh, each job but not in the profile not here because this is a summary this is the highlights of your experience so you want as much as possible to match what you write here in the profile with what is a requirement in the job description okay um same thing for example vendor coordination if the job you're applying for list that you are going to be managing the vendors you're going to be the contact point for vendors cool then you mention that here. But if the job description doesn't say once 
anything about vendor, so it will not be your responsibility. Don't bother mentioning vendor management, vendor coordinators, coordination, sorry, in the profile. This is noise, this is pollution, this is a very um, strategic part of your resume because it's on the top, it's at the very beginning, there is a high chance that recruiters will read that. I don't know if the recruiter will scroll down and go to read the last word on your resume, but probably the recruiter will read this part because it's the first page, it's the top part of the resume. So you want to make sure that everything you mention here in the profile or summary or career highlights or highlights is extremely important, not for me, not for you, for the company you're applying for, for the job description. And your guidance, your reference is always the job description. Okay. Um, I have this some kind of in my face here, but okay, I will manage that. Uh, the third thing is, ah, okay. Now we go back to the experience here, not go back, we go to the experience part. And I'm going to take this job here, Candice, that you had at Avon, Avon. Sorry if the pronunciation is not correct. Look, I noticed that you stayed in this job. You have been actually, you're still there, right? In this job since 2014, so almost 10 years, nine years, almost nine years in the job, so a long time. When I saw that, I was like, did she had different uh, job titles? Did she got internal promotion in the company or not? This was not clear to me. And then when I was reading it, I found this phrase here, previously held, the titles of associate uh, associate manager and assistant manager. Look, if you had internal promotion in the company, if you started in a lower level, then you got promoted, then you got promoted from management position to a different position, you do want to highlight that as clear as possible in your resume, Candice, and everyone else watching, because when you are promoted within the company, it tells only good things about you, that they like your performance, that you're doing things well, that you are used to the company's culture and all of that. So there are only benefits of being promoted within the company. You want to highlight that in a clear way, not only in the end of the first paragraph. I almost didn't see that. So make sure you make more clear, on a, like you see the, the, the job, the job title here, the, the dates, and then you see already that, oh, she had three different positions in the same form. This is extremely uh, positive, and you want to make sure you highlight that. So make it more explicit every time you had internal promotions in the company, because that speaks good stuff about you, okay? Candice, I know you're live, so uh, let me know if those comments were valid, if they were helpful if you could um you know learn something new and if you feel ready to improve that let me see the comments here oh she said you said it right <laughs> nice nice so i hope it was helpful mm. again i know i'm being very strict with my comments but i think that's the way we learn so i'm not here to just say oh your resume is amazing all of that because if you share the resumes, because you probably are not getting the results you want, right? That's why you wanted my feedback. And also, uh, I want to take this opportunity to teach everyone who is watching the live about best practices related to resume writing. So I'm going to find something that I can share, even if it's a very small detail. But my intention here is really to, to help you to improve the way you write your resume and down the road, land the remote job that you want. That's my purpose here. That's actually the purpose of all my content and my services is to help you to land a remote job. So Candy said definitely help. I'm really glad to read that. Amazing to have you live. It was nice. Uh, you're asking, should I remove the expertise section or tailor it to the specific job posting? You can tailor it, but maybe instead of just saying, um, Product management, for example, you add something else, you give some context, you give a little bit more of information. So you can do both things. You tailor it to the position and you also add a bit more information to give some context and add a bit more value. Okay. Nice to have you live. Thanks for being here. Nice. It was helpful. Um, someone also asked in the chat, uh, I don't see the name, apologies. I just see as LinkedIn user. So I think it's because we are not connected. 
but someone wrote here in the chat, um, I have one resume specifically for the ATS, and then I have a print resume that I attach as additional documents. I cannot see your name, but this is a good strategy. So let me explain to everybody. If you have a more beautiful resume with like colors, photos, columns, and all of that, you can use that if you're sending it directly to someone. If the recruiter says, can you send your resume via email? send a beautiful one. If you're chatting with the person on LinkedIn, you're going to send it via uh, LinkedIn chat. You can send a beautiful one, a pretty one, right? As this person mentioned. Uh, if you're going to apply through the company's web page, any kind of remote job board or through LinkedIn, then I don't recommend that you use the pretty one. Go for a boring, basic Word or PDF document without colors, without columns, without photos, go for the basic. But if you have a more pretty one, like this person mentioned, uh, you can use it to send via email to someone or uh, via chat and send directly to the person. Okay. Um, all right. Who is ready for, I think it's the fourth resume, right? Yeah, the fourth resume. Who is ready for that? Let me know, or if you had enough, then I can stop. But I'm here ready. I'm here ready, and also I'm ready to welcome you in my VIP Telegram group. Uh, as I mentioned before, I have exclusive material, discounts, information, activities happening only on the Telegram group. So if I were you, I would just go there. It's free, so there is nothing much to lose. <laughs> and you're going to gain a lot of things. So I, I definitely... Uh, take care of the group and I share exclusive information, materials, activities there. And I'm organizing something very interesting that I will not talk about here because it's a topic for the Telegram group, the VIP Telegram group. So just grab your phone, scan this QR code and I'll see you in the Telegram group. And then I see everyone is ready here. Matthew, Christiani, Candice. Okay, so enough about the VIP Telegram group. Let me get ready for Fourth resume, it's from Kiran. Kiran Bala. Kiran, are you here in the room? Let me know. Kiran Bala. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing the name properly. Yeah, it's hard because we have people from all over the world, so I'm never sure if my pronunciation is correct. Kiran Bala from India. Kiran, if you are here watching live, please say hi in the chat. I would love to feel your energy and to know that I'm like talking to you directly, but you can also be watching the recording. That's perfectly fine. But just say hi if you're here. Kiran, okay? Kiran Bala. Let me see what I will share about Kiran. Check my notes here. Got it. It. So I will scroll down a little bit Kiran's resume so you can see that. This is the first page, okay? So we have like three different uh, job titles, areas of interest. So we have this part. Then we have what Kiran called professional summary, all those bullet points. Then we have skill set, a lot of things listed here. And then we start the uh, Kieran said career counter, um, like the experience part, right? The, the details about the job itself. But if you pay attention here, Kieran, uh, almost half, maybe even a bit more of the first page of your resume, you listed a lot of things here, right? A lot. There is a lot of information here. All of that is all before you start talking about your work experience some things here are very well written uh, i was reading all of that so some ideas are like powerful or interesting they show that they give like quite good uh, idea about what you did but here comes the comment here um you want to make sure that everything you mention in your resume is directly relevant to the job you are applying for okay your resume the content of your resume needs to match the requirements of the job description. The, 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 the perception I had is that you listed pretty much everything that you can do regarding human resource management, operational efficiency, training and development. And this is not what I want to see the recruiter in a resume. I want to see like, I have this requirement in the job description. Do you have experience on it? Then you talk to me about it. I'm looking for this other requirement, skill, experience. Do you have that? 
then you mention that on your resume and there is another match. When you just list everything here, it's a lot of text. It gets very dense. It gets a bit heavy to read. It makes me feel a bit lazy to read. And when I'm saying lazy, it's not that I'm a lazy person in general. It's just like recruiters are very busy. So we need to put ourselves into the recruiter shoes and make the text as easy, as smooth to read as possible. So this is very dense here. And by dense, I mean like a lot of information, like all of that. So, and it is well written. It is interesting. I'm also from HR, so it was like, was nice so all very familiar and all of that but uh you want to narrow down the information that you mentioned to the requirements in the job description so you can probably shorten up these to half of the text or even one third of the text of what you wrote okay so make it more relevant especially if you're talking about the first half of the first page of your resume because it's a very strategic part of the resume as i mentioned before I don't know if someone is going to scroll down the resume and read this the last thing you wrote might happen or might not happen but the first page especially the top part of the first page is very strategic it is a very um very expensive area let's say in your resume so you want to make sure that you mention the uh the most relevant information on it all right here um what else the experience part Ah, okay okay uh look at this this is the career career counter the experience part right so kira mentioned several bullet points can be less okay this is also very very long and then key deliverables can be marked for that information but i will pick up this one the second one led like this yes led a training team of over 100 employees in a hostel uh oh, i don't even know how to say this word <laughs> very hard words to pronounce uh, environment for 50 months effectively enhancing their skills and operational readiness when you talk about uh leading a training team i am understanding here and that you are applying for a position that is related to giving training right that's why you are mentioning this bullet point so everything that goes in your resume should be relevant to the job you're applying for so if you're applying for a training position and you mentioned that you gave training to the team go some steps further and share more details about it so you shared 100 employees that's nice i like that that's very visual can you imagine like a big group 100 people all together like a big room you are training them i like it it's visual i can understand the complexity of what you did you also mentioned um uh, 15 months nice you put like a timeline also help helps you do that but what else can you add here maybe the kind of training that you're providing uh training for right it specifies some of the trainings and when you said effectively enhancing their skills and operational uh, readiness how can you measure that how do you know that you are enhancing their skills their performance improved by 20 percent in the next month after the training uh their managers reported that the overall performance of the team increased by 50 percent after they started implementing the content of the train the training you know be more specific because when you just said effectively enhancing their skills how do you know that how can you demonstrate that so don't worry too much about mention everything but the things you pick up to mention you go deeper and you share examples numbers that demonstrate that you did what you said you did okay kid so go deeper into whatever is relevant for the job description and then uh okay okay then this part here i don't know if you'll be able to see um i hope you do but this part here that i'm gonna highlight now this part here it is inside a gray box it's like a gray rectangular i think we have let me see if i have another example here here also this well this part here the human resource management, operational efficiency, and training and development is like a, a, a box. Uh, what is the name of that? A text box, I think. Uh, that is a dark blue, right? This thing here, this text here, is inside a text box that is in gray. So uh, here, 
here the same thing. Avoid using that for the reason that I mentioned before. Some of the ATS, some of the applicant track systems, they will not read a text that has a gray background or any kind of background, blue, dark blue background. So it's better that you write in black on a white uh, paper. That's it. Don't overcomplicate. Keep it simple because, again, content over layout. So, oh, I'm going to put a box, a text box in gray because it looks fancy. It's not about looking fancy. It's about the content, what you write and how you write and how aligned it is with the job description and the company's expectation that they're looking for for that position. So uh, keep it simple here, okay? You don't need that many colors and uh, text box and all of that. Stick to the content and the more relevant and the more um, narrow down to what they're looking for in the job description. Better. It doesn't need to be too much. Too much gets like noise, heavy, a bit tiring to read. Uh, less is more when it comes to resume. The more like sharp aligned to what you're looking for, the more your resume speaks directly to the requirements of the job description, the better. Okay. That's it. What I wrote about Kieran's resume. So, Kieran, are you there? Are you live or not? If you are, please say hi in the chat. Ah, Cristina, Cristina Leal. Estás? Nice to see some familiar faces here. That's amazing. Let me see. So, Kieran, if you're here, just say hi in the chat for me to know it. Uh, hi, down. Nice to see you here, Claudia. Hey, Claudia. Uh, Network is terrible. Oh, I'm sorry if that network is terrible. There is a recorded version. The recorded version will be available in my YouTube channel. So I will share in the chat also the, the, the link to it. So apologies if internet is not, is not working properly. Really sorry about that. Adrienne is asking, I have about 12, 15 bullet points listed for my two positions. Wait, Claudia. Um, is that too many? Yes, 12, 15 is, is too many bullet points. You can have less. Is there a certain uh, suggested numbers? I think with five or six, you're fine. And I would say go for achievements instead of description. Instead of listing all the tasks you did, go for achievements, specific examples with numbers and percentage if possible. Uh, what you did, for whom? how the impact and always tailoring that to the requirements in the job description. So instead of 12, 15, go for five or six that clearly demonstrate that you have the, the skills, the, the profile they're looking for in the job description. Okay. Um, we are almost one hour here live. I have one, two more resumes, but I don't think I'm going to have time for two more. Can I do one more resume? I get excited here. So uh, let me know if that's okay, if that's enough, or if you're still uh, available and interested in one more resume writing. Uh, yeah, I prepare way too many. Time is not enough, but at least one more. So let me know if you want me to review one more resume. Let me know in the chat, or we can also finish here. That's also also fine. Maybe uh, you've got already what you were looking for in this live. So let me know in the chat if I should go for one more or not. And once again, uh, scan the QR code, let's meet in my VIP Telegram group to keep the conversation going, gifts for you, exclusive material discounts and things that I talk only on the group because I don't have time here, as you can see. <laughs> so in the Telegram group, we have more time for all the topics also related to remote jobs. Okay. Okay. People are saying, let's go for one more. All right. If you ask for that, I will do it. So let me get the next resume okay all right so really really Granger. sorry again if my pronunciation is not correct so let me remove this and let me go for the last resume really Granger. i think that's the pronunciation we go Rayleigh Granger. Sorry again if I'm not saying it in the right way, the proper way, but the intention is good. Okay, Rayleigh, Rayleigh, are you there? Are you live? Uh, let me know. Say hi in the chat. 
uh, link to the Telegram group, Dominique, I share the QR code. Okay, so I'll share it again later. So you just scan the code and you go directly to, to it. Okay, Rayleigh Granger, are you here? Are you live? Let me know because I'm going to review your resume right now. So let me see what I wrote here. All right, we're going to start with the skills part. So you see that I'm trying to pick different aspects from different resumes so I can touch a lot of things instead of repeating the same thing. So in this case, uh, for Rayleigh, right, I'm going to start talking about the skills part. So she uh, wrote the skills part. She wrote one, two, three, four, five different skills, right? Photography and Adobe Creative Suite, Creative Content Management, Teaching, Support, Sales, all of that. Okay. The problem here, really is that uh, you mentioned this percentage here, 90%, 85, very specific, right? 82%. How did you come up with 82%? Like, who said that you have 82% of teaching and support? Who, how did you measure that, really? It's a random number, I'm assuming, right? And also, like, what does it actually mean when you say, I have 82% of teaching and support skills? I, I don't get it. I don't, it's not clear. Okay. So 88% uh, of communication specialists. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Is it advanced? Is it intermediate? Like also the colors, like the yellow until here means 88. It's not clear. And remember what I said before about the ATS system. This thing, 90% of the callers will probably not be, be written well, be understood by a software, by a robot. Me as a human, I'm not understanding. Imagine a robot, 82% of teaching and support. What does it mean? So keep things simple. This percentage here is a random number that you just came up, I don't know how, but it's not very clear. So we want to make sure that everything on the resume is clear because, I mean, at the end of the day, what you write on the resume is the message you want to share to the company, to the recruiter. So the, the more clear it is, the better. So don't go for two colors and then 90%, 82%, 88% because it seems very specific, but it's not. Like, I still don't really know what 88% of communication specialists mean. So try to use a more uh, clear and straightforward language, okay? What else? Okay. Look, let me start from the beginning. This is the first page of Rayleigh. Rayleigh, if you're here, please say hi in the chat. Um, this is the first page of Rayleigh's resume. Then we go to the second page, selected highlights. It's a full page with almost full page, sorry. Then we have the core competences, additional credits. And then the third page, this is the one I want to talk about. Detailed job descriptions. All right. Um, a resume is not a job description. Two different things here, okay? Job description is the thing that the company, the, the, the document, the information that the company shares, listing the tasks the requirements, the kind of person that you're looking for, the kind of uh, problems you're going to share, you're going to solve in the company. So the job description belongs to the company, not to you as a job seeker. You have a resume and you're going to summarize in your resume your skills, your experience, whatever you have to share that is relevant for the job. But there is no point in add a detailed job description. This is from the company side. You don't want to nobody wants your attention to everybody this is very important uh, and it's kind of a common mistake also you don't want to make your resume make uh, your resume looks like a job description listing a lot of things like this and this and the, it's not the point you want to make it clearly demonstrate that you have the skills and the requirements that the job description from the company is looking for but there is no point of adding a detailed job description in your resume. It's a resume, it's not a job description, okay? Uh, I don't know if you wanted to say something else, but that's what is written, detailed job description. And what I can tell you, uh, Ray, is that job description is a document that it will be provided from the company side 
It has nothing to do with your resume. I mean, of course, it has to do because it's a reference for you to understand what is relevant to mention, but it's not a job description. So we need to differentiate them because otherwise we think like I need to list everything that I did in the job. I need to share all the details. I need to cover every task that I did. And no, no, no. You're going to narrow down to the more um, relevant information for the job you're applying for. You did all those things here that I've highlighted, and you did much more. I know that, right? Because you have been in this job since 2018, so quite a long time. But you don't need to list everything. You're going to list only, only the things that are relevant to the job that you're applying for. So don't be misunderstood. Don't make any confusion with the job description. Job description is the document that the company provides with the, the requirement, the skills, the, the, the skill set, right? The, the kind of person they are looking for in your resume is a summarized version of all your work experience and skills to um, show to the company and say, hey, interview me. I'll tell you more about it. So it's not detailed job description. There is no, no need to do that. Okay, Rayleigh. And then, uh, okay. Uh, going back to page one. Sorry that I'm going uh, back and forth, but I, I need to show you this part here. Brief timeline. When I saw that, I was like, I'm not understanding that brief timeline. Because initially, I thought this is very short, right? That this uh, uh, one bullet point only with a very short description. When I read this brief timeline, I thought that's very short, right? Um, here again, just one bullet point. But then I saw the selected highlights. And then we have another half page here. And then I saw the detailed job description. I was like, okay, now it's too much information. And then we go to the fourth page, right? So this resume has four pages. Very long, as I said before, recommend that you stick to two pages. So you don't need to have a detailed job description plus a brief uh, timeline. Go for something that uh, fits in two pages, really, and uh, select, choose the information, only, only the information that is relevant to that specific job you are applying for. You don't need to list everything. So a resume is not the detailed job description, and the resume is not the, the full history of everything that you did professionally. The resume is a summarize, it's the most relevant information, the highlights for that specific job that you're applying for. So by doing that, you go from four pages to two pages, and everything that is written on the resume is uh, more relevant to the recruiter that is reading that, okay? I hope it was helpful. Hafa, hello, hello, nice to have you here. So Rayleigh, I don't know if you're here or if you're gonna watch this live, but I hope the, uh, the information I shared was helpful to you. I'm gonna stop sharing now. And uh, Dominic asked for the link to the Telegram group, so let me share that again here. Dominic, please grab your phone and scan that with your camera. And we are going towards the end of the live. Uh, more than one hour already, so thank you for being here with me. Thanks for watching that until now. And I would love to read in the comments one takeaway that you are taking for uh, from this session. Claudia, thanks for having you here. Always nice to see you, to see you again. So let me know in the chat one takeaway, one thing that you learned here in this session that you're going to be able to implement in your resume. So it doesn't matter if I was evaluating your resume live or not. As I said, I try to make uh, my, my teaching here relevant to everyone that is watching. So I would love to see at least one thing that you learned that you will be able to uh implement in your own resume so please share in the chat i will be happy to read that one takeaway one thing that you learned if you are here until the end i mean i'm assuming it was worthy right your time <laughs> i just want to make sure my time was also worthy so please send me some feedback to see what you what you got, what you learned, and then I can also understand what was more relevant and use that to create more lives 
about those topics because I understand that's uh, something that you're interested, something that you are uh, in need of more. So let me see. Claudia shared a summary, uh, summary more information mm -hmm. and reduce the CV from three to two pages. Amazing, Claudia. Yeah, narrow down two pages is a very good size of resume. Uh, Milad said not adding colored boxes. Exactly. Neither using color. Very good. You got it very right. It's going to look less beautiful, less colorful, less modern. I get it. But what you want to be like is to have your resume moving forward in the process and getting your job interview. So it's not about being colorful and beautiful. It's about having the right information written in the right way so you get the invitation for the interview. This is the purpose of the resume. The resume is there to get you a job interview. It's not there to be beautiful, colorful, and all of that. If it works, black and white, PDF or Word, perfectly fine. Uh, Stacy said, thank you for the tip. Uh, the thing that jumped out to me was to add more details about things I have achieved. Amazing, Stacy, And to add numbers and percentages. I know that it's not always easy to, to have numbers and percentages, especially if you're talking about like a job you did five years ago. You might not have this data so i know it's it's hard but try try to remember you can use like approximately 20 percent around 100 people uh over 2000 uh, sections you know if you don't have the precise number you can use about around over uh but it always it's always good to add numbers and percentage oscar said hi oscar mil gracias juliana saludos desde colombia nice to see you here oscar Claudia also said, adapt to the tasks of previous jobs to the specific job I will apply for. Mm -hmm. And not all the tasks I had, exactly. So forget about making your resume looks like a job description. It's not a job description. It's still a resume. And you're going to narrow down the information. You're going to target the thing that speaks directly to the uh, job description requirements. Very good, very good. Uh, Matt said, the difference between an ATS resume and a direct connection resume or to bring with you during the interview exactly so if you're going to send your resume to someone specifically via email or on a linkedin chat you can use the fancy one the colorful one the one with columns and, and all of that but if you're going to apply through linkedin through the company's uh, career page the company's website or any kind of remote job board go to the one that is more ats friendly in other ways the boring one Volumes, no color, <laughs> no photos, no box with with uh, like text box with colors. Just go for the regular one, normal one, with uh, well written and relevant content for that specific job. Okay. All right. So thank you once again for staying here with me. Impressive. One hour, fifty minutes. So well done to you who was here live with me. Well done to you who was uh, watching the recording. I really appreciate that. Um, keep an eye on future lives. I hope I meet you also on the VIP Telegram group to share more information, more content, and to keep helping you to land the remote job that you want. Okay. I'm Juliana Rabi, career coach for remote jobs. Thank you for being here. Thanks for your good energy. And I hope you could learn from me. Take care. I'll see you in the next live. Take care. Bye.